Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you. Oh man, we've had a couple of weeks, haven't we? Uh, so I want to talk through some stuff. Today was uh, fairly active on my uh, X account, or you know, if you want to call it Twitter still. Uh, you can see here by the title of the video, if you're only on YouTube, uh, presidential campaign tagged me and a host of other apes. You can see at the top right here, uh, just a cut of that, but I'm going to show you the whole thing here in a minute. And so tagged me, tagged Kitty, tagged some other apes. Uh, I'm going to highlight all of that. So interesting day. I will talk about that a little bit. But we've got a lot of other things to talk about because it has been an active couple weeks. Sorry I haven't made more videos. Uh, just balancing work, family, and a whole lot going on for AMC and GameStop. Uh, so just, you know, if you, if you want to see me more frequently, you're going to have to follow me on X. Uh, otherwise, I know some of you prefer not to be there, so you, you can wait for the videos, and here we are today. Um, so a few things we're going to go over today. Uh, the past couple wild weeks, like I said, I'm going to cover those a little bit, kind of a point of view on Kitty's uh, posts. I'm sure everybody's been decoding those uh, left, right, and center, and everybody has a point of view, but I, I, I'm, I'm part of everybody, I guess. I've got a point of view, so I'm going to share that with you. Uh, GameStop's shelf offering, going to talk just a little bit about what I think is going on there um and tie that to something if you followed me a while you know about the great unwinding that i call it so we'll talk about that a little bit why i think that may be related uh, i'm going to talk about the consolidated audit trail or cat uh, if you're on x you're probably seeing post after post after post about cat and i'm going to talk about t plus one we're going to talk about volumes the uh incredible rise in volumes between gamestop and amc lately uh we're going to talk about this rfk jr tagging what's going on um, and give you sort of the inside scoop since I was involved a little bit. Uh, to be clear, before we jump there, I don't want to turn anybody off. I'm not saying I'm involved with the campaign. I'm just saying I, I knew this tweet was coming, and we'll talk about that. Um, I am very committed to not being a political account. I believe apes is a unifying movement. So in fact, why don't we just jump in? So if you didn't see the post, um, I guess go just Google it. I'm not going to read this whole thing. But long story short, um, RFK Jr., um, had won kind of a, uh, uh, a settlement with Monsanto, and he took all of the money that he got, and he put it in GameStop. Now, of course, I've been mostly an AMC account. I sure would have liked to see some money in, in AMC, but that's not my business, right? It's his money. How many times have all of us said, bro, don't tell me what to do with my money when the shorts come around? So I'm not going to turn around and do that to someone as distinguished as him, for sure. But I will say... Um, I guess now I can kind of reveal, it, it's actually been some time now, a matter of months, that the campaign has kind of uh, just low-key asked a few of us some questions. Um, nothing big at all, just kind of here and there, kind of saying, what are the issues that you guys care about? You know, like maybe a focus group. There's, there's effectively been a little bit of a focus group of a few apes. Some of us on here, so you can kind of see at the bottom, uh, I'm just highlighting because it was fun for me to be not only tagged, but tagged next to Kitty. I do not feel deserving of that. Um, he's a much larger account than I am and uh, was far more of a trailblazer than I. But, uh, you know, everybody plays your part. So that was kind of cool to see. Um, you know, Cat Striker on there and a few others. Uh, I think, like, there's one account. Um, well, anyway, you guys can go through and just see who all the accounts are. So pretty cool. Tagged AMC, tagged GameStop. Said, hey, I put money in GameStop, but if you're, if you're kind of paying attention, you can see there's a nod to Adam. I ride with you. Um, and some apes actually found that Adam has served on some, uh, I think, human rights committees um, kind of related to some work that RFK Jr. has done. So that's kind of neat to see. There's probably some relationships there. Um, yeah, what a cool thing to see. And here's where I, I so I'm getting full disclosure. The campaign actually asked if I, they would have their permission to tag me. So that was pretty respectful of them. I thought that was cool. Um, and at first, I'll be honest, I actually said no, uh, crazy enough. I said no, uh, and I said, or at least, you know, give me some time to think about it. And then I thought, okay, you know what? It's not us apes tagging them. It's not us trying to glue ourselves to a campaign or get political. It's a campaign noticing the work of many of you. And here's where I want to credit, you know, everyone. It's sort of the uh, there's no I in team kind of thing. Um, all of you, in your own ways and places and spaces, have been pushing and pushing and pushing for what? I mean, we're at three and a half years now. There's a few people who were even really here, let's call it even four years. Um, 
So the amount of, let's call it all of us pushing a boulder up a hill, you know, I've used that analogy a little bit. I said something like kind of riding bikes up a hill and getting to the better kind of the, the downhill part. Just pat yourselves on the back that we got noticed. Um, and the job's not done, right? So in no way am I celebrating like, yay, we did it. Um, I'm just saying, let's celebrate milestones. An actual presidential campaign saw the apes, wanted to be vocal about it, put some money where their mouth is in GameStop, um, put themselves out there in terms of, uh, you know, specifically uh, tagging apes, tagging our hashtags, um, tagging both companies, using one of Adam's sayings. So there's a lot here, and you can see they're kind of calling it the retail rebellion. Maybe we call ourselves apes. That kind of makes sense to me, retail rebellion. I get that phrase. Um, you know, aggressive Wall Street re reforms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit more background. Like I said, they've kind of, I don't know, used us as a focus group for a while. My point of view is any, let's say, I don't know, political campaign who's going to come and ask me like, hey, why have you been fighting? What are you pushing for? What are the changes needed? Why would I not take that phone call? It doesn't mean I'm endorsing anybody. It doesn't mean I'm going to get political. Um, in fact, a while back even, there was even a meeting, I'll just disclose to you, where they, like I said, focus group kind of asked a few of us, hey, what's going on? What do you think? Um, and uh, I was even hesitant to join the meeting because again, I just want to stay very far away from becoming politicized. Um, you know, here we are in a presidential campaign year. We all know that it would be a great opportunity to divide the ape movement. Uh, and so at that point I, I was not sure. And so I asked, um, I asked someone, actually someone on the campaign who themselves had been a community activist. And I asked them like, you know, how have you handled that in the past? And they shared that multiple uh, presidents had come through some of their community work. They had, had done a significant amount of community work. And, you know, both Democrat and Republican campaigns had come through and heard from them on the ways that they felt uh, certain communities needed, needed to be served. Well, like, why wouldn't you want the halls of power to hear what needs to happen for the communities that you're trying to fight for, right? And we're fighting for the retail or the household investing community um, and, and some larger fraud and corruption that I think is worth talking about. And so I also asked, you know, a personal friend, um, took him out to coffee, someone that I just really trust in my sort of kind of, kind of call it IRL in my real life. Uh, and he, he gave the exact same answer. So that was interesting. He said, well, you picking up the phone or, or taking a meeting from someone coming to you is not you pursuing them. That's not you getting political. That's you having a chance to speak into things that need to be addressed. Um, and so just so you all know, that's my point of view. You know, if the Trump campaign or the Biden campaign or any congresswoman or congressman or, or whatever would come to me, I'm going to say, here's the things I see and here's the things that need change, right? So that's my point of view. That's why I allowed them to tag me. I can't speak for anybody else on this. Um, you know, there's a couple people on this list that I think are awesome. There's a couple people I don't really know. Uh, and so... I'm not going to speak for them. I'll let them have their own voice. They're, they can speak for themselves plenty. But big moment, worth celebrating, but uh, definitely does not mean we're done. That's my point of view. All right, so what's my point of view on Kitty's tweets? Boy, there were a lot. I just selected a few that, for whatever reason, um, caught my eye or were meaningful to me or anything like that. Uh, just kind of some interesting things going on for the week. I'm going to be real. So first of all, don't know him, right? When he first came out um, tweeting, I was like, whoa. And, and there was the hint, right? He liked, he liked another tweet. Um, and so everybody was, actually, there was even a hint more than like a month ago. Someone, I think, saw that I, maybe he got the blue check or something. I can't quite remember. Um, you know, someone basically saw that there were signs of life <laughs> on the account. And boy, <laughs> signs of life is an understatement. That's why I'm laughing, because the moment he comes, boy, the energy picks up. So I, I'm not even going to say like a point of view. Actually, no, I guess I am. That's the whole point of the slide, literally titled point of view. But what I mean is I'm going to be respectful. Some of you, uh, there's a whole spectrum of, of thoughts about why did he come back? What is he up to? Who's he connected to? All of that. So I'm going to be thoughtful about how I share this. But what I'll say is uh, as the week went on, 
I felt like I was having a lot of ahas, and some pretty deep, to be honest, um, and learning some things that I even did not know. As long as I've been in this story, uh, as engaged as I have been, I was learning along with you guys. Um, sorry, it's just been a long journey, so sometimes even I'll get emotional. Yeah, so I was learning along with you guys and just seeing, whoa. Um, and you know what was interesting? You know, like them, love them, hate them, indifferent, neutral, whatever you are, you cannot deny the level of energy that came <laughs> with him. So it's he came in like a just a like a shooting star, and, you know, burned hot and burned fast and then is gone. Um, and so as the week went on, I'm going to be honest, the first day or whatever, I was a little skeptical. As time went by, I realized, and now here is my point of view. I think he told his story. I think he had his story told in books and in movies and in doc, you know Netflix documentaries and whatever, but I don't think he ever told his story before. And what a fitting way, if you watch them all through, and I've seen, I've seen both angles of some people saying, hey, watch him backwards, like he's had, you know, the mirror tweets. I, I do have a point of view on the mirror tweets. I'm, I'm going to keep that to myself for now. Um, some people say, hey, watch it backwards. Some people say, just watch him through, you know, forwards. Either way, if you kind of start to see them as like a quilt that is stitched together, or a, a sequence of uh, vignettes. I think he told his story. And what better way for him to tell his story than through memes, right? That is that is the story. Is You know, he's like Mr. Meme. Um, so I thought it was really interesting, and certainly it's created a lot of energy and buzz. Um, and I think that's all I want to say about it for now, but just I respect the fact that he said, you know what, I want to tell my own story in my own voice. And boy, did he do that. So, yeah, that's my thought on that. Um, going to skip. There we go. I accidentally kind of doubled up this slide. Volumes um, on both AMC and GameStop. I'm only going to show you AMC because it's a lot more radical of a shift. Um, GameStop is a significant jump in volumes lately. Um, side note, you know, I, I believe part of the story that Kitty told was obviously, certainly he's been a GameStop ape. Um and started the movement in many ways, you know, so let's give him a lot of credit. Uh, but I do believe part of the story he told or the reminder he brought was, listen, whatever ticker you're in, if you're for the retail movement and you're for transparency, fairness, a level playing field, stopping corruption, then what are you doing fighting each other? Right, so everything he does has layered meanings. That's my point of view as well. Um, I'm, I'm not suggesting that some of what he said, you can just take its surface value. Uh, he's a heck of a smart guy that um, I'm impressed with his level of intelligence, to be honest. You can spend weeks, you could probably make a class picking apart his memes. In fact, someday they probably will. Um, it's like a literature class or something. Okay, but certainly you can't deny part of the message was stop fighting. Uh, and, and let's just think through who is our opponent and who is our teammate. And so you're not going to get from me, you know, any elitism for AMC or GameStop or anything else. You're just going to get from me, here are the market issues I see. And you know that I happen to have been mostly an AMC account. I have talked about Bitcoin maybe over the past nine months to a year for uh, various reasons. Um, the last week, making that um, seem pretty correct. But we don't need to fight each other. So my point is, you, you know, you're seeing me start to talk about GameStop a little more. If you're a GameStop ape and you're here, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to talk about your shelf offering here in just a minute. Uh, I think that's worth talking through. I do have some thoughts on that as well. Uh, so enough on all that. Sidetrack a little bit there. But look at the volumes. And so if you kind of go, so we had the January, you know, people like to call it the sneeze rather than the squeeze, whatever you want to call it. But January and June, you can see those were pretty big bumps historically on volumes. You know, just go back a little bit before. These are monthly candles, by the way. So in January, there's June. You can see the volume spike. But boy, oh boy, look at uh, May now. And, you know, we're not done, right? It's only, what is it, May 21st. There's the rest of the month left. 
this volume candle is only going to keep climbing. That is one heck of a thing. It's very, very telling. And by the way, if you followed me for a minute, think about all that I have told you on the great unwinding. That is basically about undoing all of the fraud committed against us with the tokens and wrapped assets. Um, if you're new here, there is a playlist called The Great Unwinding, or you can find me on X. Just look up hashtag The Great Unwinding. Start digging through that. Look through my highlighted tweets if you like to. So you can either find a YouTube playlist or you can find all of my uh, tweets about that. In particular, the highlighted tweets will help you give you a crash course on what I'm calling The Great Unwinding. It's really about, if you just go back in a nutshell, the night before the buy button removal, AMC, GameStop, and a couple other meme stocks. Uh, so FTX, Binance, a group called Bittrex, a group called CM Equity AG, create the tokens. You know, you've heard of tokens or tokens, um, tokenized stocks, basically. Uh, if you didn't know, those were created the night before the buy button removal. So that'll, that's the first big, big red flag on what those things were all about. And then you can go through the rest of our history, in particular AMC, and how hard um, tokens were pushed on us as a community. And then you get the you know FTX going down not long after uh, uh, AMC offers Ape. Um, you guys have kind of heard all that story, so I'm not going through it again. But my point is, this was what I always thought was coming someday, a massive, massive spike in volumes. So it's really interesting to see um, that that is going on. We don't yet see the price action related, but I am, I am more calm and comfortable than I've ever been because of what, what I'm watching develop. Um, so speaking of which, let's talk about GameStop's um, shelf offering, you know, speaking of developments. I'm not going to go into details. I'm going to be a little cryptic here, and it's going to require you to really go through the Great Unwinding thesis. So again, you can just look up that hashtag, look up my highlighted tweets uh, on X, or look up the playlist here on YouTube, and you can kind of catch up on all that has been going on with tokens. And you'll get a few others like Uniswap and Ethereum and something called Wrapped Assets and a whole lot of stuff. Here's the point. When I saw the sort of mixed shelf offering from GameStop, and I saw that Kitty had come back, and then I saw that announced for GameStop, you know, some of you might feel like, oh, crud, dilution, and all of that, right? In AMC, we've gone through that many times over. We've had the discussion. Um, you would know, uh, if you're new to my channel, I have two master's degrees in business. Um, I tend to be a fundamentals channel i'll go through you know i i try to stay away from all this cryptic stuff i've just had to get there a little more lately because sometimes you don't want to show your cards i suppose or sometimes maybe i'm sending signals to people that i see some things whatever it is generally my account is kind of a i don't know no frills straightforward you're going to get numbers you're going to get forecasts um you're going to get an explanation of business uh with regards to the shelf offering, when I saw all that, what I saw is potentially, um, I have described AMC having kind of gotten on an arc um, because maybe a storm is coming and that that was going to mean really good things in my opinion. I'm very bullish on this thesis. Uh, I have a feeling that Kitty decided to fight for the GameStop community and make sure that there were, let's say, two of this animal on the Ark. If you know the story of the Ark, right, two of every animal has to get on. And AMC was on the Ark. And uh, I'll say, actually, even maybe people in Bitcoin are generally probably on the Ark, uh, in my opinion. But now GameStop, I believe, we're going to have to watch this play out. I've left some cryptic receipts so that, you know, perhaps if there's ever like a dumb money too, I can show what I was saying and what I believed uh, so that I can prove I wasn't just blowing smoke and making something up. But I believe maybe GameStop is getting on the arc. Let's just see. Either way, oh, so the reason I was bringing up the business thing, um, because either way, even if I'm you think I'm crazy and I'm wrong about this great unwinding stuff and the arc and all these things and you don't understand it, um, you know, GameStop bringing in more cash to build a business, uh, whatever that investment's going to be, you know, you know that RC can invest in securities, right? So it could be that. Maybe he sees some opportunities. Um, he could invest in the operations. Uh, I've been pretty honest that I believe there's still a little bit more transformation left to do to, to bolster the operations. But the fact that you're going to have 
a bigger war chest. Uh, I do not think that's going to be a bad thing. As long as the value added to the company in the long run, you know, outpaces the dilution effect, then if you believe in your management company, you stay. That's that's always been my point of view on AMC. Profits are coming. If you have been strongly in the GameStop community, if you believe in the management company, if you believe that good things will come because they have some investments, and if you at all think that I might be right about this getting on the arc, then, you know, it's only opinion. I can't tell you what to do, but you stay. So that's my point of view on the shelf offering. I'm actually really bullish for the GameStop community. Sorry, I can't explain that in <laughs> much deeper terms, but review the... the uh, the great unwinding. All right, let's shift our focus to more meaty stuff or more, uh, let's say, less cryptic stuff. So I'm going to talk about T plus one and I'm going to talk about the cat um, news that we got, the consolidated audit trail news, because people are saying, whoa, what's this delay to 2026? Um, what is that? So I'm going to actually try to um, uh, put context to that, get specific. So first off, don't forget T plus one, that's not delayed. T plus one coming at the end of the month. That is a big, big deal. And especially, let's go back, think about these volumes. You know, I haven't checked the failure to deliver report in a minute. Probably worth going back and looking at that. I would be honestly kind of shocked if all of these volumes have been delivered. You know, I'll tell you, I've, I told you, I've never been so calm and confident. Um, not that I would have sold ever before, but I, there's days this week, and or sorry, you know, in the last week and a half, that I didn't even have a chance to track the ticker because I'm just in a real busy season at work. And then I was also tracking a lot of just some personal stuff and then tracking all of the noise that Kitty was making. Um, the point is I wasn't even tr tracking the stock, much less selling anything, right? And in fact, I have bought when I've had some, I'll call it loose change. You know, I remember Adam posted those uh, ape couches, you know, whenever I found change in the couch, I've been buying. Um, I imagine there are a lot of you who are in the same boat with me, have not been selling, perhaps have even been buying. So to see that volume, and I'm not sure who's selling that volume to justify that. Now, be thoughtful. I've said this before. Day traders will get in and get out multiple times in a day, right? So if they're trading, let's say, six entries and exits or something, um, that it can overstate the volume. So it doesn't have to always be sort of one for one. Uh, a share could be traded back and forth a few times. We know that. But still, look at this level. You know, Adam had, I think, you know, um, been in San Francisco, I believe it was, and shared, you know, the day we, we traded over like a billion shares. Um, this is split adjusted that you're looking at now. That's why these are so much lower. But back then, it was just insane that we had traded that many shares. Look at how many we've been trading now we've traded the float like eight times over in the last week and a half or something. Uh, so the point is, imagine what that starts to look like when we get to a T plus one settlement cycle as well. Um, th there's just a lot coming. And I think a big storm coming at some frauds and cheats. And if you don't believe that again, look at the great unwinding playlist and look at who's been going down there. All the people I said were cheating us uh, are the ones who have been either under investigation getting fined, or literally going to jail. Um, so we got more coming, in my opinion, and I think we're winning. Let's talk about CAT. And interesting, first I want to just talk a little bit through, um, I mentioned I have two masters in business. I worked for 21 years at a Dow Jones company. In that time, mostly I was kind of something of a functional expert um, in, in sort of planning and forecasting and inventory and that kind of stuff. Um, which is why I've been able to forecast AMC's business. I've got some abilities there. Uh, but I had some odd side projects that were like totally out of left field where I was leading and managing large projects and programs. And so I know something about how those work. And so I spent some time today on the CAT website and I was like, oh, I think I see a little bit about what's going on. So I want to just provide you guys a little background um, and then I want to talk about the actual specifics of, you may have heard by now, some things got delayed till 2026. So what got delayed and is it a big deal to us or not? So let me set the, the stage first about how projects like this are managed um, and then get into what specifically got delayed. So when you have really large programs and projects, and I'm talking the one I was doing was like, um, gosh, this was, let me think for a second, 
15, 16 years ago. And then I was in it for like four years. Um, and even at that time, you know, 15 years ago, this was a $50 million uh, program. So you can imagine a company decides, okay, we're putting $50 million into this. Uh, that wasn't small potatoes 15 years ago. It's, it's got to be like 70 to 100 now. Um, well, you have a roadmap. You've got all these gates and dates you're tracking. You've got all kinds of project management um, disciplines. You've got these go live dates. And I will tell you this fourth bullet is, is key to understand. I, it's almost like I can't tell you how many times we had reschedules and a reworking of the roadmap. And you have all these release dates. And so you say, all right, next quarter, here's what's going live. And then in a year, here's what's going live. And in three, or I don't know, five quarters, here's what's going live. And you have all these plans that are all working in parallel. And it's so normal to have um, delays or renegotiations, something you find out isn't going to work correctly. And you don't want to go live with all kinds of business risk. And so you will make sure that you have enough time to address problems and not take a business down. In this case, we're talking about, you know, reporting and tracking our entire kind of financial system, pretty much. Uh, I suppose that's an overstatement, but a lot of it. And so then you have these things called tech specs and gap analysis. And so as I was on their website, I was seeing all of that. So like, look here, you can see tech specs, industry specifications, scenarios, gap analysis. So I'm just telling you, I can tell um, and, and it's, I guess I had my own duh moment, like, oh, duh, this is a really, really large program, and a program is a collection of projects, so this has been in the works for years in multiple projects as they're getting all delivered in pieces and chunks, because you're not going to do all of this at once. So what I want you to hear is reschedules are fairly normal. However, I am pressing very hard on this. I want this to go live. We want transparency in our markets. Let's go back to RFK Jr. tagging us. You could see in his post even, he talked about transparency. Um, so let's keep loud, let's keep pushing. But I, I'm just telling you, I'm not freaking out when I see, oh, they saw something wasn't totally ready and they're going to have to wait. So what's the something? So what you're probably seeing um, is there'll be some people saying, ah, the cat's delayed, oh no, what? Um, it's important to see what specifically is delayed. And now look at this that I've highlighted. Section 6.4, or parentheses D. So it's a very specific section that participants said, can we temporarily exempt ourselves from this requirement? And that got pushed till 2026. So what the heck is that? All right, so I, I wanna actually just go look. Uh, at 6.3 and 6.4. And 6.3 because it kind of told me some things about what's not delayed. Um, why don't I make this bigger? Just make sure you're seeing this on your screens. So 6.3 is the data. Here's what gets recorded and here's what gets reported. Record and report. Um, and so I'm not going to read this at all because you're going to see it's a lot. All this stuff is getting recorded and reported. I'm still scrolling. We're still in 6.3. Now we finally get to 6.4. Okay, so we just had three pages of data requirements getting recorded and reported. That's not what got delayed, right? So what got delayed? All right, um, here is how I read this. And this is just a cursory, like I skimmed it kind of a read. Uh, so we're going to have to let this kind of flesh itself out in coming days. But you're going to see it is pretty specific. Um, so 6.4. Now, remember, it's not all the 6.4 either. We got to get to D. So now, all right, here's A, here's B. Can you see here where I'm looking? So here's C. Okay, now we're to 6.4 D. Required industry member data. Subject to blah, 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 blah. Here's what I, I honed in on. Options market makers. So what I'm seeing is specific. Look at this language. With respect to options market makers. And then the rest is blah, 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 blah. And then look at point two. So you get, we're in six, point four, point D, point one, and two, and three. So, right. So this is very specific pieces that got delayed. Options market makers again, with respect to options market makers, blah, 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 blah. 
with respect to reporting obligations of an options market maker, blah, 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 blah. So what I believe got delayed is not the capture, because notice this is reporting also, by the way. Um, not the capture of data, but the reporting of data, and for who? Options market makers. Now, I am not trying to tell you that that is not a big deal at all. Many of us believe that a lot of the fraud and manipulation has happened in the options chain. Uh, some of us believe that there are ways that FTDs have been buried in the option chain. Um, some of us believe there are ways that you can manipulate and land at max pain. All these things. Um, I am, let's go back to RFK Jr. Why have people like that noticed us? We've been advocating loudly, consistently for a very long time. And so I'm saying we're going to stay loud that there are issues in the options chain, in the options market and with the market makers that need to be addressed. So you are not hearing me change my mind about that. But I do think sometimes we get wrapped up in, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, let's be angry at everybody. And what I'm telling you is it's normal to manage a program, have release dates. Sometimes you say, whoops, we're not gonna be ready. Or you learn something that is gonna break if you go live with, with whatever you're going live with, and it's the responsible thing to do to wait. Now, I'll acknowledge these are people who I don't trust in general. I'm just going to put that out there plain as day. I don't trust the market makers, in particular the options market makers. But I don't think that means this is as big as some people are going to make it out to be. The rest of CAT is still on track. We're still going to see a lot of updates and we still have, let's go back, T plus one. So a lot of big things are still happening. You know what I didn't put in this video that I'm going to just sort of sidebar on real quick. Speaking of big things happening, in the last few days, you've seen news from Iran. You've seen, you know, the helicopter that went down and then also the chief of police, I think it was. Something like head of police or head of security or something like that. Um, have, have effectively either had some untimely accidents or have been removed. You have, uh, I think it was the Saudi king with pneumonia. Not totally sure what we're going to be learning there. Uh, you have the head of the FDIC stepping down. You have news that um, the head of JP Morgan, so you guys have heard of Jamie Dimon, um, poss possible connections to Epstein Island and a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, and a lot of fraud and manipulation in that bank and a, and a real hatred for Bitcoin, by the way, that um, he is probably retiring early. You have seen Vanguard replacing leadership all over the place. You're seeing some really big things in political positions and in high finance positions. So watch the chessboard is what I'm just telling you. There are signs that... Um, I don't know, that big pieces are moving on the chessboard. Most of them I'm generally happy to see. And I'll kind of put it that way. Okay, we're actually all, all the way to the end here. Um, let's end with kind of a special message, a few last thoughts. Uh, if you're on X, you would have seen me tweet. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, the last couple of weeks were a little more emotional for me and I got sort of tapped into that side of me. So for those of you who prefer numbers and finance and uh, forecasts and that kind of stuff, it's still me. I'm still going to do some forecast videos soon and a, and a sort of view of where we're going. Now, by the way, side note, on the box office, you know, some people have wondered if we're behind. No, we're, I, we're actually tracking to my forecast. We were just a little backloaded this quarter. So if you've noticed, the last two weekends have progressively started to get a lot better. Uh, and then now we've got some people are calling it Furiosa. I love it. Uh, we got Garfield and Furiosa coming out. And then you've got like Quiet Place and Bad Boys 4 and Inside Out 2. Uh, there's just a lot of movies, you know, coming at us now. And I've always said, get to May and then it gets even better in June and even better in July. And so what I have forecast is happening. We're fine. We're good. And so I had said also for a long time, for months, I've been telling you, get ready to turn your eyes forward a little bit. You know, the, the earnings reports were kind of a rear view mirror Oh, there's that word mirror. <laughs> I can't, I didn't even pick that up. Um, I had been talking about not looking in the rear view mirror um, and Kitty kind of used mirror too. So I guess that was on both of our minds uh, a little bit. 
And then as I saw Kitty come back, as I saw what's going on with GameStop, as I'm reading tea leaves, and yes, that is not DD, that is my take on the world. Uh, and in general, if you're new here, I try to be a DD channel, I try to provide sources. Uh, you'll hear me say over and over, don't trust me, bro. There's no trust me bros here. I want to get us all out of trust me, bro, and into hard DD. So forgive me, I'm saying as I watch the developments of the last couple of weeks, it is my point of view, there have been some significant shifts and perhaps some changes in our future. Whether that is, you know, next day, next week, next month or next year, I am very bullish on the future of our two communities and of and some other areas of life. And so my point of view on this first bullet, prepare your mind and heart. If you have brokenness, sorry, I'm going to be a little less finance for a minute here. If you have holes in your life, if you have dysfunction, if you have bitterness, hate, rage, fear, anxiety, depression, whatever it is, money in my opinion is not going to fix that. I 100% understand that some of you are like, hey, bro, I just need to pay the bills. I need to put food on the table. I need to put clothes on my kids' backs. I need to pay for the car insurance. That stuff is real life, my friends. And I see it. If you know my story, I grew up in that life. People had to give me clothes. People had to give my mom and I food. Our church had to buy us a car. I understand that life. So I'm, I'm not talking to you about just wanting to you know, Adam talks about survive, then thrive. If you're just trying to get to thrive, I see you and I support you. And I'm saying, even if we get the win we think we could get, even if everything plays out in a fairy tale scenario, money and heart are not the same thing. And my point of view is we have fought against greed and corruption for years now. So if and when we win, and you know I say I'll never name dates, I'll never name prices, but if and when we win, if your heart is not prepared, if you don't have a plan for generosity, if you haven't thought through who are you helping, what are you doing with this, how are you making a difference in the world, how are you shining light in your communities, where is it not even just money-based, where are you getting engaged physically, where are you being generous with your time? If you haven't been preparing for those things, you're the same person with the same problems and just some money in the account. So I just ask you, prepare yourself, like examine your heart, look at the places where you might need to make some shifts. There's growth for you. You're called to something bigger and better. There are people who need you. Whatever it is that's kind of poking at your heart, I, I bet you've had something. It's been in the past months or the past years, whatever it is, take some kind of baby step. You know, I don't know, pick up the phone and go serve at a soup kitchen. Um, provide clothes to, you know, a house for, for um, women in distress. Um, offer to babysit for your neighbors. What, it doesn't take much. I've told a story like when I was little, I literally didn't have a pair of pajamas and somebody bought me a pair of pajamas and I'm telling you it changed my life on the inside. I'm a different person because someone did that for me when I was little. It does not take something big. It just takes seeing people, giving dignity, giving honor, giving respect and meeting needs. So sorry for preaching. Actually, no, I, I'll tell you what, I'm not sorry for preaching. I'm sorry if that's not your jam. And with respect, I think it's important that the people who are, are, are vibing with this, you are hearing this, that you prepare. Because this isn't just about money. This is, for me, about the heart and soul of, this is going to sound kind of wild maybe, but of, of all of Western civilization. We have let greed take the front seat and put its hands on the steering wheel. And so what got us here, even if we all, let's say some good people get money, that sounds like a good thing. 
But if we don't do good things with it, what have we really accomplished? And then guess what happens? One, two, three generations from now, our kids or their kids or their kids' kids are fighting us because we didn't make the changes we were supposed to make. So please just think about that. That's all I'm asking of you. Uh, second, you never know when you're entertaining angels. And I will just say the last couple of weeks have been a whirlwind for me. Um, some things I figured out in my real life. I would just encourage you, if there are times where someone pops into your life and you have the opportunity to support, encourage, mentor, or humble yourself and learn from, you just never know who it is you're dealing with sometimes. That's all I want to say about that. Finally, a cryptic, actually not finally. <laughs> if you've been around, you know I got one more coming. Um, but almost finally, a cryptic message to olive trees. You know what I believe, and now I actually believe it for both of us, which is why I'm going to highlight we, we will